They've been a familiar feature on London streets since 2010, but it seems we're not using these bikes as much as we used to. In fact, journeys on the TfL cycle hire scheme were at their lowest for a decade. Last year, there was a change in the price, and of course, there's more competition now. Alison Earle has more. With these, these and these, there are more options than ever to pedal around the capital. London's original bike hire scheme was launched by former Mayor Boris Johnson in 2010, but the numbers using so-called Boris bikes are not what they were. Figures suggest journeys made between January and July were down by a third on the same period last year and are at their lowest for a decade. And some believe it's the price. Last September, TfL changed the annual subscription and the fee for single journeys. I would um, usually have four journeys for the cost of £2.50 p a journey. I went to hire a bike and found it was £1.65 per journey. So my four journeys would cost £6.60. Others point to the rise of rival hire bikes. Reducing usage of the Santander scheme is the competition from all the dockless hire bikes. There are now four main dockless hire bikes uh, operators in London and their usage is going up no end, as is cycle use overall. Among these riders though, ease and comfort is key. I actually don't have my own bike anymore because it got stolen so many times that um, which is really annoying. This is much more convenient. The line bikes and the forest bikes and, and that kind of thing, which are really fun to ride. They're, they're more expensive, but they're fun to ride. I've used the Boris bikes. Those bikes are heavy. Those bikes are heavy. In response, TfL said it's working to make cycling more accessible and is increasing the number of e-bikes in the scheme. Its big ambition now is to get daily bike journeys up to 1.6 million by 2030. With a bigger choice, it does seem as if more Londoners are being tempted onto two wheels. The question is, though, which ones? Alison Earle, BBC London.